Man dies during underwater wedding proposal. It became a viral video. Unfortunately, the man didn't make it back to the surface. What should have been the best day of his life turned out to be an absolute catastrophe. In this video, I will break down what we can see on the footage, what happened, what I think as a professional freediver happened and how we can prevent it. Coming up. What's up, Gerd from GerdLeroy.com with Master Freediving. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm a freedive instructor, I dive from breath holds, and this channel is all about helping you master freediving, including tutorials, stories, and the latest news from the freediving community. And today, I'm gonna break down the footage that is available of a fatal incident that happened in September 2019. A man died while proposing to his girlfriend underwater. So if you're new here, consider subscribing, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. All right guys, so the reason I decided to make this video is because I don't want these incidents to happen to anyone. So if I can contribute to educating people around the world on how a dive can be done in safer ways or how you can avoid uh, getting into critical situations while freediving, then I think it is my task as a freedive instructor to do so. So this video is by no means uh, meant to point fingers at anyone. The only reason I'm making this is to give you my personal view, me as a pro freediver, as an athlete, as an instructor. I want to tell you what I see on this uh, footage that is available, the footage that was shot by his girlfriend, and how we um, could have prevented uh, this uh, tragic uh, incident. The article states, we don't know yet if he was injured on the way up, if he hit his head on something, or if he had a heart attack. We really don't know all of the details yet, other than he did drown. I think it is a human thing to look for external factors, some kind of a deus ex machina that uh, suddenly popped up and caused uh, the death of this man. But when we look at the footage, I think uh, things are pretty obvious. So um, let's do this. So let's talk first a bit about the setting. So the couple was in a hotel room, uh, which was anchored uh, 10 meters or 32 feet underwater. When you look at the window, uh, the window is of course a bit higher than the bottom of this uh, cabin, this hotel room. So we can um, more or less assume that the window was somewhere around 8 meters, between 8 and 9 meters. Now 8 to 9 meters, almost 10, is already a pretty challenging dive if you have no experience in free diving. So what do we see? So the diver goes down and he's staying like on the top of the window. He's like almost out of the canvas. Now this is already a first indication that things were more difficult than he thought it would be because if he was very confident, if this was a, an, an easy dive, then he would just go to the middle of the window right in front of his girlfriend and show the note and the ring. The fact that he's staying on top almost out of the canvas shows that he is already struggling. So what's going on here, he is obviously fighting the positive buoyancy. So on the first, let's say 10 meters of a dive, you are, uh, depending on the weights you're wearing, but this, uh, this man is not wearing any weights, uh, which makes him even more uh, positively buoyant. So he's fighting the positive uh, buoyancy, which means he has to um, use a lot of force uh, a lot of energy to go down and to even stay at the same level. Now when we take a look at uh, the moment when his head goes again a little out of uh, the canvas, out of the window, so he's floating back up, you can see if you pause the video that there are some bubbles coming out of his mouth. Now I have looked at this footage many many times and in the beginning I really didn't see that. It's only when I decided to make this video that I started looking deeper into this. There are bubbles coming out of his mouth. This is something we don't do in freediving. An involuntary exhalation is a sign of big troubles. We say in freediving bubbles or troubles. Now experienced freedivers they know how to dive on exhalation but that is something completely different. Uh, when we dive as an experienced freediver on either FRC, functional residual capacity, or RV, residual volume, those are techniques for, for uh, advanced freedivers. And we do this on the surface, so we exhale on the surface and then we go uh, down. We never do this when we're under the water, so the fact that this diver is already losing air, uh, bubbles coming out of his mouth, is a very big um, sign of stress, of panic. This man is at this moment very much in panic. And he knows it. Now a little later, if you um, look very closely, there is already a second exhalation. Now imagine first exhalation is already uh, a big state of panic. Second exhalation, even worse. At this time, he should have gone up, of course, but he's about to propose to his girlfriend. This is the biggest day of his life. 
he's not giving up, you know. He knows, he knows very well he is in trouble already, but he still wants to do this proposal, show the notes, show the ring. That's, that's when he got even more in trouble, of course. And then more uh, obvious, the third exhalation uh, when he is in the canvas, you can clearly see this. You know, if there would have been an experienced freediver next to him, this guy would have already grabbed him and brought him back to the surface. Because as an experienced freediver, when we are the safety diver of our students, when we see this happening, an exhalation, and especially a second and a third exhalation, wow, you don't want to go there. We immediately grab our students, if that would ever happen, of course, we never let it come to that stage. But if it would, we grab the students, bring him back up to the surface. We don't let our student go any further, any deeper, hold his breath any longer. Because we know that the next stage of this exhalation is, of course, a blackout when you lose uh, consciousness. And that is most likely what happened here. I said most likely because I do not have all the details. Nobody has. We can only base ourselves upon the footage we have. But I think it's fairly um, yeah, reasonable to say that the moment the diver um, swam back up, he just blacked out, he lost consciousness. And if you have no one to save you, then this is in almost all cases fatal. The only way you can survive a blackout underwater is when you drift back up, which is probably what happened uh, in his case, because he was positively buoyant. And if you would uh, surface with your face uh, above the water, then you have a slight chance of surviving this, because when you wake up, you can just breathe, you have air. However, if you black out and you go up to the surface with your head down, that's, that's the end. You cannot survive this. So blacking out underwater without a safety diver, almost always a fatal case. By the way, guys, if you think I'm missing anything, then please let me know in the comments. Now, the question is, why did he get into a state of panic? And this state of panic, of course, accelerated everything. He started using uh, burning more oxygen, getting out of breath. So why did it happen? Now, first of all, he was diving alone. Never dive alone, that's the number one rule in free diving. If he would have someone with him, then he would have felt more secure, you know. If you enter into a state of panic, but you know there is a guy looking at you and he will take care of you if it's necessary, then it's easier to deal with the panic and maybe the panic isn't even a problem anymore. But if you know you are all alone and you suddenly realize, oh shit, I am in deep, trouble now man your heart starts accelerating fast you're burning oxygen that's a very bad situation i also think he underestimated a, a 10 meter dive if you look at his uh, finning uh, technique um, i don't think he has done this before his body language just shows that he's not feeling comfortable what might have uh, possibly also contributed to a state of uh, excitement is of course the fact that he was proposing to his girlfriend i mean this is the day of his life probably, so a heart beating faster, a adrenaline flowing. And these are all things that you have to avoid at all costs in freediving. Freediving is just the opposite of adrenaline. It's the opposite of uh, excitement and faster heartbeat. You have to calm down and preserve uh, oxygen. So the fact that he was doing this specifically uh, for a marriage proposal uh, might have contributed to um, getting into a state of excitement and eventually into panic. And then the last thing I want to say about this is the mask he's wearing. Freedivers, we always uh, wear a typical freediving uh, mask, of course, um, with smaller volume. That means there is less air in your mask than in a scuba diving mask. If you look at the footage, the, the man is clearly uh, wearing a scuba diving mask. There's a lot of air in. Why am I mentioning this? I mean, I'm not saying that this has contributed to um, the fatal incident, but it might have. I mean, I'm just considering all options. As you dive deeper, there is pressure from the water and air is compressible. So if you're wearing a mask with a lot of air in, this mask, this, this air gets compressed and the mask gets sucked upon your face. We call this a mask squeeze. If you are not prepared for this, then this might feel very, um, very scary, you know. So maybe this happened also that his mask, as he dived deeper, was getting sucked onto his face. And it's a bit like an octopus is sitting on your face trying to suck out your eyeballs. You can imagine if you feel something like this and you are already um, not feeling that confidence, this contributes even more to um, getting to a state of panic. So when he finally shows the ring and he quickly swims back up, 
it was already too late. So my take on this is that he uh, blacked out uh, little seconds after he uh, swam back up. This is a very sad incident. I wish we could go back in time, but unfortunately we can't. So if you ever go out freediving, make sure you have a buddy with you always. Question of the day, have you ever freedived alone? Let me know in the comments, yes or no. And be honest about this guys, it's no shame, just let me know, have you ever freedived alone, yes or no? And if you want to know more about mastering freediving, then hit the round subscribe button here, and here I have another video about safety for freediving and blackouts. So go ahead and click on that. That's it guys, see you next time. Peace.